In our number 10 spot today, we have the angler fish. In case you're thinking, hey, this fish looks familiar. Well, that's probably because this is the fish from Finding Nemo that almost ate Marlin and Dory after Dory sang her infamous ballad, Just Keep Swimming. Gosh, now that I've been reminded of it, you better believe that I'm gonna be singing it all night long. This aquatic fish can be found in some of the darkest spots of the ocean. The angler fish has an organ attached to the front of its head. Yes, that's right, an organ. This organ is called an esca. The esca is able to emit light due to a special form of bacteria called bioluminescence. The esca organ is actually the reason that the anglerfish is able to live in the ocean about 3,300 feet, which is 583 feet more than the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world. There is supposed to be over 200 species of the anglerfish. That's 200 too many if you ask me. In our ninth spot today we have Nautilus. This is an ancient mollusk that has been around for 500 million years. In fact, they have been around before Pangaea was even fully formed. Now, originally there were 10,000 different species, but now only a few are left and are at risk of extinction. That's because of us. We are over harvesting them, and on top of that, they are slow at reproducing. They need to be left alone right now because they run the risk of extinction. It's kind of sad once you think about it. Like they survived for hundreds of millions of years and only now start to die thanks to humans. Coming in at number eight, we have the horseshoe crab. Now what's trippy is that despite their name, they are not crabs. In fact, they are more closely related to spiders or scorpions. Isn't that weird? Now these bad boys are considered one of evolution's ultimate survivors. That's because they date back to 450 million years, meaning they survived five mass extinctions. Now these guys can grow anywhere from 18 to 19 inches from head to tail. Males grow a little less in size, only being 14 to 15 inches. Still, that's pretty big. The horseshoe crab consists of three parts. They got a front shell, a back shell, and a tail. Now, you may be looking at this tail and you're like, whoa, what the hell? No, 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 that thing can sting me and then kill me. False, horseshoe crabs, although creepy looking, are harmless, but they do have eyes everywhere. They have 10 in total and that freaks me out. In our seventh spot today, we have the goblin shark. Now, if you've seen my other video on sea creatures, then you know how much I hate this guy. It literally gives me the creeps, and I'll show you why in a second. Now, the goblin shark has actually been declared a living fossil, and that's due to the fact that it was thought to have gone extinct millions of years ago. That was until 1891, when a goblin shark was spotted off the coast of Japan. Researchers realized that the shark was indeed still alive. And in fact, it barely changed over time, hence why it's considered a living fossil. So these creatures can grow 12 feet long and can weigh up to 460 pounds. But in 2000, they found a giant goblin shark that was 20 feet long. So now researchers say that they have no real idea about how big they can truly get. Now, these things have the creepiest looking appearance hence why I'm not the biggest fan of them. Plus they have this weird ligament thing in their jaw that makes it so that they can extend their mouth out and snatch up their prey. Plus their mouths launch out really fast. That's also why its mouth area just looks so creepy. In our sixth spot today we have the lamprey. Has anyone here watched a series of unfortunate events? You know, the movie with Jim Carrey, not the TV show. Well, you know that scene where they're on the lake and the giant leeches start attacking their boat? Well, lamprey look exactly like those giant leeches. These things look like they're a mix between a snake, an eel, and a leech. They can be anywhere from five to 40 inches in length, and they attack fish by sucking the life out of them. They're literally like a vampire. Now, wait until you see their mouth. They have 11 or 12 rows of teeth that wrap around in their mouth like a ring. And once they latch onto their victim, they use a barbed tongue to pierce the fish and then just drain the blood out of them. They also excrete a blood thinner to prevent blood clotting. What's crazy is that these creatures have survived four major extinctions in their 360 million year existence. That is wild. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the frilled shark. Now this is another pretty creepy looking shark. In fact, it doesn't even look like a shark. It looks like an eel mixed with a snake mixed with a shark. But fun fact, these sharks are actually the cousins of the great white shark and the hammerhead shark. Now these bad boys have been around for 80 million years. Pretty insane, right? They live in the dark abyss of the deep sea and have rarely changed over the years. Now they were given the name of the frilled shark because because of the frilly appearance of their gills. They also are kind of similar to snakes because they have hinged jaws that allow them to eat big creatures 
whole. But you don't need to worry, okay? They live deep in the ocean and they don't really show themselves to humans. In our fourth spot today, we have the Wabagong shark. Again, another shark that doesn't really look like a shark. And that's because this shark has camouflage techniques and it likes to blend in with algae covered rocks or the ocean floor. And they do a good job with it too, with their flattened bodies and speckled patterns on their bodies. Now, these dudes have been around since 11 million years ago. But don't worry, these sharks don't attack. They'll leave you alone if you leave them alone. The only time they have attacked is when a diver got too close or someone accidentally stepped on one. But no fatalities have ever been reported. In our third spot, we have the Greenland shark. This shark is said to be one of the longest lived vertebrae animals. The shark is also said to be one of the world's largest carnivores and one of the most successful predators in the Arctic waters. These massive sharks are about the same size as a great white shark and eat crustaceans along with things that have fallen off of the ice shelf above. Also, apparently, these creepy worm-like parasites like to attach themselves to these sharks' eyes and literally eat their eyes out, okay? I think that's scarier than the shark itself. But yeah, the Greenland shark is still alive today. They live for at least 250 years. One of them lived for 400 years. Some may live to be 500. Isn't that crazy? For reference, a great white shark lives for only 70 years. So they got nothing on the Greenland sharks. Coming in at number two, we have a pygmy right whale. Now, these whales have been around for about 23 million years. In fact, they are considered one of the rarest species of whales. Around two million years ago, they were thought to have gone extinct. That was until 2012, when they were rediscovered. Besides that mystery, there's another one, which is scientists don't know where exactly this whale evolved from. There's been much debate over this for a while. What we do know though is that these whales like cool waters, which is what puts them at risk because of climate change. Scientists are worried the rising ocean temperatures will wipe them out for good. And in our number one spot today, we have the whale shark. Here's another name that does not match the creature because this animal is not a whale at all. It's not even a whale shark hybrid. The only reason it's called a whale shark is because of its size. It currently holds many records for size in the animal kingdom. It is the largest shark and largest living non-mammalian creature. And it's been around for at least 26 million years. However, now they are endangered. Now when you think of sharks, you think that they love to eat fish and if they get a whiff of blood, they'll just go crazy. Well, whale sharks aren't like that at all. In fact, they are filter feeders, meaning they eat plankton, fish eggs, decaying plants, etc. So these sharks are pretty harmless. In fact, an aquarium in Atlanta lets you swim with them. In case that was on your bucket list, there you go. Starting off this countdown, we have the snipe eel. Now, I really don't understand how this is a real creature because it looks fake. The snipe eel is like a mix between a hummingbird with a tapeworm, which is a very interesting mix. It's unlike any creature I have ever seen before. Plus, this thing can grow as long as four feet. Imagine that, you're swimming in the ocean, all of a sudden you feel something tickling your feet and it's this thing, no thank you. To make things creepier, this dude has its digestive system System in its throat and it has 750 vertebrae in its spine. That's way more than any other known organism. See how I said known organism? Because if this thing is real, then what else is out there in the ocean? Next up in our number nine spot today, we have the goblin shark. Named because it looks just like the mythical creatures and perhaps just like the HP Gringotts bank employees, but in fish form, the goblin shark has been swimming in the deepest parts of the sea for over 100 million years, most known to be found near Japan. The goblin shark has a long snout which is a kind of antenna, which makes it capable of sensing the minute electric fields being sent out by prey nearby. They can grow to be 12 feet long and weigh up to 460 pounds. Wow. Their fang-like teeth allows them to snap up their prey and devour it. At this point, scientists don't know too much about their behavior. However, they have concluded that they live a pretty solitary life. Next up in our number eight spot, we have the harp sponge, also known as the Chondrocladia lira. I have to say, this sea creature is actually so satisfying to look at for some reason. Anyone else get me? It literally looks like a harp, which makes it so hard to believe that it is a living creature. This sponge-like creature is actually known for its carnivorous 
appetite. It actually has velcro like hooks on the external part of its body, and they trap copepods and other small crustaceans. They then break down its prey until it's able to be absorbed through its pores. So it sucks you in with its velcro like body parts and proceeds to eat you. In our seventh spot today, we have the vampire squid. Yes, a real underwater vampire. Despite its name, the vampire squid is actually neither a squid nor an octopus. Scientists have separated it into its own group, even though it is quite similar with eight arms and two tentacles. The vampire squid can grow to around 12 inches in length. Its body varies from completely jet black to red. Its name comes from its dark color, and its skin kind of resembles a cape as its skin is connected to its arms. Fun fact, if one of its arms were to be removed by, say, a predator, then it can regenerate and grow back. That's pretty cool. Coming up in our sixth spot today, we have the barrel eye fish. Okay, not going to lie, this fish looks like it's from another planet, let alone a parallel universe. It basically looks like it had a run-in with the company that makes those glow-in-the-dark bracelets. Am I in our 90s babies? Super happy to see this. Do kids these days still use glow in the dark bracelets? Please let me know in the comment section below. The barrel eye fish is a deep sea fish, also known as a spook fish, and it got its name because it has barrel shaped eyes with green lenses. They are known to have large fins, and they're also known to have a transparent head that fills with fluid. Before 2009, scientists actually believed that they could only look up, but they have since observed that the fish can rotate its eyes forward when it's eating. That's pretty cool. The barrel eye fish is usually seen looking like it's lying down motionless. According to researchers, their transparent heads and green pigmented eyes help in filtering out the sunlight reaching their deep sea habitat. They have also been found to be in the North Pacific waters and near Baja, California and Japan. In our fifth spot today, we have the flapjack octopus. Gosh, why is it named this? Now I'm going to have to eat pancakes after this video. As delicious as its name sounds, its look instantly makes you say, better not. In fact, it looks more like a cute Pokemon, if anything, so I'm going to choose to believe that it's really a creature from my universe where Pokemon really exist and it somehow got into our universe through some underwater portal. The Flapjack Octopus is a part of the Umbrella Octopus family known for their umbrella-like appearance during any kind of movement. It lives between 500 to 1,500 meters below the sea. They are mostly found in the Eastern Pacific Ocean with some sightings in the Mid-Atlantic Ocean. They don't have a long lifespan, usually living for 1.5 to 2.5 years. The flapjack octopus eats prawns, lobsters, crayfish, shrimp, krill, crabs, to name a few. When it's ready to hunt, it flattens out its body in order to appear less threatening. The flapjack is another creature found in Finding Nemo, one of Nemo's, you know, class friends named Pearl. In our fourth spot today, we have the Dumbo octopus. As you can probably guess, its nickname came from the fact that its ears are as cute as the famous Disney character, Dumbo. The Dumbo octopus, like the flapjack, is another umbrella octopus, and it can live down to the depths of 13,100 feet, and some scientists speculate even deeper. They are inkless, unlike a lot of their cousins, and they move by slowly flapping their ears, and they use their arms to steer. Fun fact about female Dumbo octopuses, they can actually store sperm for long periods of time after mating with a male. This is to their advantage, of course, because they can then transfer sperm to the most developed eggs when it is the right time for reproducing. No comment, <laughs> but that sounds great. <laughs> they eat pelagic invertebrates that swim above the seafloor, and as such, they spend much of their lives suspended above the seafloor. In our third spot today, we have gulper eels. The gulper eel is quite terrifying to look at, and it is definitely the kind of fish that makes me slightly terrified to go swimming in the ocean. But I don't have to worry because they are in the deep sea. I only have to worry about, you know, sharks, stingrays, and stepping on a jellyfish. The gulper eel has a very distinctive trait. It has a very large mouth, and it tends to snap at its prey, similar to a snake. Its large large mouth and its ability to open wide allows it to eat creatures you would otherwise assume would be too big for it to eat. It has a very skinny body, long and snake-like. They are about two to three feet in length and they live in the deep, deep sea ranging from 1,600 to almost 10,000 feet below the 
surface. Known to be the fish of your nightmares, and of course I don't disagree with this. In our second spot today we have the pelican flounder. This fish is actually found in the western pacific and indian oceans. The pelican flounder makes itself as flat as possible to counter the pressure levels of the deep sea. Scientists haven't been able to observe this fish much in its natural habitat and so therefore nothing much is known. But we do know that the pelican larva however looks like it is from another dimension and it has a very alien like sort of appearance. The larva are transparent and become brown as they grow into their adult form. They grow to be about 38 centimeters in length. Save the best till last. In our first spot today, we have the blobfish. Most people say that this is the ugliest fish in the world, but personally, I think the goblin shark is worse. Would love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. Which fish is uglier? The blobfish, the goblin shark, or let's throw in the angler fish too, because that's another gross one. The blobfish has been described to look like a half melted human reduced to nothing more than a bubble. That is the perfect description of it. It also kind of reminds me of slime, but living. This fish can be found living in the deep sea of the coast of Australia and New Zealand. It is said to be residing in about 2,000 and 3,900 feet deep. Apparently the only reason it looks like the way that it does is because of depressurization damage done while bringing the animal to the surface. It looks like a fairly normal fish though at the bottom of the ocean. The blobfish has an extremely long lifespan of 130 years. It weighs about 20 pounds and it's about 12 inches long. They have no teeth, no skeleton, and they don't spend much energy moving around. So basically their name is quite fitting. Starting off this countdown we have the ultra black fish. There are a couple of ultra black fish that are so dark that they are almost invisible. At least 16 species of these fish have specialized skin, which makes them almost impossible to detect. Their skin is so unique that they absorb 99.95% of all photons. This makes them blacker than black. Even under a harsh spotlight, these creatures appear as mere silhouettes. That's why it's also so hard to capture a photo of them. One scientist said, and I quote, it didn't matter how you set up the camera or lighting, they just sucked up all the light. So in a way, these fish have a cloak of invisibility, and that's why it's so easy for them to sneak up on their prey. With features like this, it literally makes them seem like they came from another universe. In our ninth spot today, we have Liviatin. Now, this dude was in direct competition with the megalodon. They were around 57 feet in length and weighed around 100,000 pounds. So yeah, they were pretty hefty guys. Not only that, but they had incredibly large teeth. Their teeth reached over a foot in length. This earned them the title of having the largest known biting teeth of any animal. But they died out between 3.6 and 2.6 million years ago. Just like the Meg, these creatures struggled to adapt to climate change. And they suffered losing their primary prey, which was small to medium sized whales. If this creature was still around today, I couldn't imagine what the ocean would be like. You'd never catch me swimming in it, that's for sure. In our eighth spot today, we have the giant oarfish. The oarfish is the world's longest bone fish. They can be up to 56 feet, which is 17 meters in length, and they can weigh about 600 pounds, which is 270 kilograms. They also look pretty weird. Like they look like a cross between an eel and a fish, but they have bright silvery skin with bright red spikes running down its back. Back in the 1860s, two men were gathering seaweed on the coast of Bermuda when this creature washed up on the rocks. They immediately got scared and thought it was a nasty sea serpent, so they killed it. Later, it was discovered to only be an oarfish. In our seventh spot, we have Ichthyosaur. Between 1976 and 1990, scientists unearthed the largest Ichthyosaur tooth ever found. The width of this tooth root was twice as large as any aquatic reptile known. It had a diameter of 60 millimeters, which is 2.4 inches. This makes it the thickest ichthyosaur tooth found so far. Then in 2018, paleontologists discovered a three foot jaw segment that belonged to this creature. Then they started to piece together the fossil fragments of this creature and concluded that this animal could have grown to 85 feet in size, bigger than the original thought this creature was. Now, these creatures were interesting. 
They roamed the oceans about 200 million years ago and had body shapes kind of similar to dolphins. It's said that they vanished about 25 million years before the mass extinction that wiped out the dinosaurs. In our sixth spot today, we have the Shastasaurus. Now, this is the biggest known ichthyosaur. In fact, to this day, this creature is the largest marine reptile that has yet been found. Now, I say yet to be found because the oceans are massive, okay? Who knows what else is out there lurking that we haven't discovered yet? There's still so much to be discovered. Anyways, turns out that these bad boys lived in Canada. Woo, my home country. And they were about 69 feet in length or 21 meters. But some researchers have proposed that they were even bigger, and that's based on their partial fossils. So we really don't know their true size. I mean, it's said that the modern blue whale was the largest animal that ever lived, but paleontologists believe that these guys were even bigger based on their fossil records. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the whale shark. Now don't be fooled, okay? This isn't a mix between a whale and a shark. It's not a whale shark hybrid. It's not even a whale, okay? But it is a shark. The only reason it's called a whale shark is because of its size. It currently holds many records for size in the animal kingdom. It is one of the largest sharks and largest living non-mammalian creature. And it's been around for at least 28 million years. It is said to be 65 feet in length and it weighs about 75,000 pounds. Now, when you think of sharks, you might think that they love to eat fish, you know? And that when they get a whiff of blood, they'll go crazy. Well, whale sharks aren't even like that at all. In fact, they're filter feeders, meaning that they eat plankton, fish eggs, and kill decaying plants, all that kind of stuff. So these sharks are pretty harmless. In fact, since it is a filter feeder, it has the ability to sift through over 1,500 gallons of water in an hour as part of its feeding ritual. In our fourth spot today, we have Leedsichthys. The Leedsichthys lived in the oceans during the Middle Jurassic period. It was all over the place in size. It could grow anywhere from 30 feet to 100 feet. So that's a pretty drastic size difference. But to this day, it is considered the largest ray-finned fish to ever swim on Earth. In fact, they were named after paleontologist Alfred Nicholson Leeds, who made important finds of the remains in 1889. Now, these dudes are pretty weird looking creatures. They look like an old whale mixed with a fish. Like, it's really strange. They also have long pectoral fins and a tall tail fin. And although they look big and bad, they mainly eat zooplankton. In our third spot today, we have Basilosaurus. The Basilosaurus, whose name literally means King Lizard, lived around 41.3 to 33.9 million years ago. At first, they thought it was a reptile. But after scientists studied it more, they realized that it was indeed a marine mammal. So its name is very misleading because it's actually a whale. But it's weird, like it has a long eel-like body. It also has huge rows of teeth and it chewed its food, whereas whales kind of just swallow stuff whole. It was at the top of the food chain, so it likely fed on sharks and large fish, among other marine mammals. This guy measures up to be about 49 to 66 feet in length, and that's 15 to 20 meters. In our second spot, we have the fin whale. The fin whale is said to be the second largest animal to ever live in the entire history of Earth. It was about 85 feet in length, which is 26 meters, and weighed about 80 tons. But even though they are massive, they are not predatory. In fact, they are totally harmless to people. They are filter feeders, so they eat like tiny krill and stuff like that. Like other whales, these had a white underside with a dark backside. They also live all around the world. They live in every ocean, except parts of the Arctic where it's just covered in ice, and they can travel great distances while munching on relatively little food. As a result, they can live for nearly 150 years. And in our number one spot today, we have the blue whales. Now it seems hard to believe, but blue whales are significantly larger than megalodons. The largest blue whale weighed about 418,000 pounds, which is more than 200 tons. Average blue whales, on the other hand, weigh a bit more than 100 tons, whereas the megalodon weighed only 50 tons. So they got nothing on the blue whales. Not only that, but even blue whale dwarfs reached 110 feet, which is 34 meters, and weighed about 200 tons. That's more than twice the size of the largest meg. Isn't that crazy? But the meg and the blue whale never met. The earliest fossils of blue whales date back to roughly 1.5 million years ago. That's about a million years after the megalodon is believed to have been around. 
In our number 10 spot today, we have the angler fish. In case you're thinking, hey, this fish looks familiar. Well, that's probably because this is the fish from Finding Nemo that almost ate Marlin and Dory after Dory sang her infamous ballad, Just Keep Swimming. Gosh, now that I've been reminded of it, you better believe that I'm gonna be singing it all night long. This aquatic fish can be found in some of the darkest spots of the ocean. The angler fish has an organ attached to the front of its head. Yes, that's right, an organ. This organ is called an esca. The esca is able to emit light due to a special form of bacteria called bioluminescence. The esca organ is actually the reason that the anglerfish is able to live in the ocean about 3,300 feet, which is 583 feet more than the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world. There is supposed to be over 200 species of the anglerfish. That's 200 too many if you ask me. In our ninth spot today we have the brittle star. For this one I want to take a look at one brittle star in particular, and that's one that's named the Game of Thrones star. That's because its appendages look like the thorny crown found on the second Game of Thrones book cover, A Clash of Kings. Now, what's weird about these creatures is that they don't have any brains or eyes, yet they somehow know what they need to do in order to survive. Like dude, it's literally a brainless organism wandering around the bottom of the ocean. And when fish get close to it, they reach out their tentacles and wrap them in a spiral and then eat them. Take a look at them. They literally look like creepy little brainless aliens. I refuse to believe that they're real. Like, I mean, obviously they are real, but like, that's a creature straight out of a horror film. In our eighth spot today, we have the black swallower. This is a deep sea fish with a big appetite, and it can handle more than it looks like it can. That's because it's slender in size, but its stomach can expand up to 10 times its original size. In fact, it can swallow big fish whole, and then the fish stays in their stomach, which gets stretched into transparency. In fact, sometimes their food starts rotting in their stomach before they even get a finish digesting it. No wonder it was given the name the swallower fish. Just look at that thing. In our seventh spot today, we have the Pacific Black Dragon. Now this is one of the sea creatures that is considered to be ultra black, so it easily blends into the depths of the ocean where no light reaches. Now this creature literally looks like an alien from Predator. Look at this, look at its creepy beady eyes and sharp teeth and like, long chin whiskers. It's undeniably creepy. Now, the males are small. They grow to be about three inches in length. Now, they're the weird ones. They have no teeth, no chin whisker thing, and no stomach. And since it has no stomach, it's unable to eat. Isn't that weird? It literally lives only long enough to mate, and then it dies. Now, the female black dragons are the scary ones. These ones can grow to about two feet. Yes, two feet. And they're the ones with the big fang-like teeth and they have that whisker or barbell. At the end of that whisker thing, there's this little light that can turn on to attract prey. So fish swimming by are like, ooh, what's this glowy thing? I hope it tastes good. And then they go to eat it. And then the black dragon is like, psych, it's me. And then they gobble the fish whole. They also emit poison, which is very dangerous and deadly to their predators. I swear, this video is making me scared of the ocean now. In our sixth spot, we have the zombie worm. In another universe, we have worms that live in the ocean and devour bones. Just kidding, they're real, and these zombie worms are from our universe. Again, I really don't understand how they are real. So these worms are about one to three inches, so they aren't that big. However, they are very creepy. These tiny things like to devour great big whale bones, and their style of eating is pretty weird, especially since they don't have mouths or stomachs. So basically, they secrete an acid from their skin that is so strong that it can dissolve bones. This then breaks down the bones' fats and proteins from the inside, which they then digest. How delicious. Now, they don't just attack whale bones, though. They'll tackle fish bones, even cow bones. I know what you're thinking, how are cows in the ocean? Well, sometimes cows or other animals get dumped into the ocean, so they'll take whatever they can get. That's not even the weirdest part, okay? The weirdest part is that the male zombie worms live inside the female ones. One study counted 111 males inside just one female zombie worm. Just one. Again, how is this real? Like it literally sounds made up. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the hagfish, also known as slime eels. Even though 
They aren't eels. Now, these ones gross me out because they literally look like human intestines. But what's even more gross are their feeding habits. So basically, they consume other sea creatures by burrowing their way into them. Here's an image of them literally eating a dead shark. They literally create a massive tunnel into the creatures and eat them from the inside out. Ooh. But not only that, they secrete the slime to ward off predators. The slime is so sticky that it can clog the gills of its attackers. Take a look at this video of it repelling a shark. Like what? The shark literally went to chomp it and then it got deterred and the hagfish was left unharmed somehow. Moving on to number four, we have the three-eyed fish. Now, when this creature was discovered in 2011 by an Argentinian man, people went crazy. So he was out on a fishing trip with some friends when he caught this fish, a literal mutated three-eyed fish. Now, it's quite possible that you've heard of this fish before, because in The Simpsons, there is a three-eyed fish known as Blinky. Bart fishes it up near the Springfield power plant in season two, episode four. So people were like, oh my God, The Simpsons predicted this fish. It was especially eerie since the fish was caught in a reservoir where a power plant pumps hot water from their facility and the water is pretty polluted. Honestly, anything with multiple eyes are not from this world. They're just not. In our third spot today, we have the mutant sea creature. In 2018, a strange looking sea creature was found floating along the shore of a beach in China. Everyone was like, what is that? And they were scared to go near it. I mean, it wasn't anything they had ever seen before, but one man wasn't afraid. So he actually went near it and picked it up. And that's when the animal started moving its head and limbs. This creature, who is not yet identified, has a human-like head with some sort of short, stubby arms and legs. There is range from a new species of sea life to a mutated starfish or a mutated sea sponge. What do you think it is though? Whatever it is, it's very creepy and alien-like. In our second spot today, we have the goblin shark. Now this is unlike any shark I have ever seen before, and that's because it has the weirdest face ever. Like I'm sorry, but it doesn't look like a shark. That's what I imagine a human crossed with a shark would look like. So these creatures can grow 12 feet long and can weigh up to 460 pounds. It was thought that 13 feet was the biggest that they could grow to, but in 2000, they found a giant goblin shark that was 20 feet long. So now researchers say that they have no real idea about how big these creatures can truly get. Now this thing has one of the creepiest looking faces. It's got a super long nose with a weird Voldemort nostrils, pink flesh, making it look like it was skinned alive. And of course, look at its sharp teeth, but it gets worse. These sharks don't hunt their prey down. Instead, they wait for their prey to come to them. They're just chilling in the water. And once a fish gets close enough, they launch their jaws out and clamp down on them. Yeah, their top and bottom teeth are attached to ligaments so they can reach out and extend its mouth to grab its prey. And its mouth can launch out to about 10.1 feet per second. And its mouth opens super wide. It can open at a 111 degrees angle. And in our number one spot today, we have the barrel eye fish. Now this fish, literally has a see-through head. Not only that, but the thing that you see there, which looks like a brain, is not a brain. It's actually its eyes. Their eyes can rotate in all different directions. They can even look up to see above them through their see-through head. You guys are probably tired of me saying this, but how is this a real creature? I'm sorry, but this fish has a glowing see-through head. Like, that's not normal. Starting off this countdown, we have coelacanth. What's confusing about these fish isn't their name. It's the fact that everyone thought that they went extinct alongside the dinosaurs. Then millions of years later, they were rediscovered. These dudes have the most famous comeback story of all time. So in the 19th century, scientists discovered a fossil of this fish. This fossil was over 410 million years old. They thought that they went extinct over 66 million years ago. So it shocked scientists in 1938 when they were rediscovered off of the coast of South Africa. But they did have have some new features thanks 
to evolution. Now the fish has four fins that move more like limbs than fins. Theory goes that maybe they were going to become a land dwelling amphibian and then they kind of just changed their mind. I know that's not how evolution works, but it's the easiest way to describe it. So yeah, here's a creature that used to rule the world alongside dinosaurs. In our ninth spot, we have the vampire squid. You know this thing is creepy already when its scientific name literally translates to the vampire squid from hell. Isn't that nice? Now what's weird is that this creature resembles both a squid and an octopus, but it's neither. This thing has eight arms and two tentacles. Its arms are lined with spines that are arranged in two rows. What's also unique about this creature is its color, which can change depending where in the ocean they are. They also have the largest eyes in the entire animal kingdom, which is wild in comparison to the size of its body. And the eyes either look red or blue depending on the light. And lastly, these guys travel around by ejecting water from a hidden organ. That's kind of cool, you know, it's got its own propeller system. In our eighth spot today, we have the giant grenadier. Now, this is a weird mix between a fish and an eel. It's got a fish's head, but like a long eel-like body. Although it looks pretty creepy, these things don't bite or sting. Now, what's weird though, is that they stink. These fish contain high levels of TMA, which is found in human urine, sweat, and uh, in bad breath. And it's safe to say that no one likes the smell of any of that. But this thing reeks even more. It's like you combined pee, sweat, and BO all together. That's what this creature smells like. P.U. No thank you. In our seventh spot, we have the sarcastic fringe head. And don't be fooled by this guy's name, okay? It's not a fish with a bad or sassy attitude. That would be funny. But I will say, these fish are highly aggressive. They are located in the Pacific waters off the coast of North America. Now, what makes them so terrifying are their demogorgon type flaps around their face that just open up to make them look intimidating. Either that or it kind of looks like the poison spitting dinosaur from Jurassic Park. Like if you agree. So what they like to do is hide out, and when their prey comes swimming by, they'll launch out and attack them. And they aren't picky. They will go after any and everything. In fact, there's one video of a fringe head swallowing a whole damn octopus. Yes, you heard me, an octopus. They have also been known to attack divers as well. So not only are their habits terrifying, but they also just look terrifying too. In our sixth spot, we have the fan fin anglerfish. Now anglerfish are undeniably creepy. In fact, they are considered one of the scariest sea creatures on earth. Take a look at a picture of them and you'll see why. Now there are different types of anglerfish. Today, let's talk about the fan fin anglerfish. This thing has a massive jaw with tons of sharp teeth. Their mouth is so wide, it extends all over the entire circumference of their head. These creatures are also covered in what looks like hair all over their body, but those are used to sense what is around them. Now, if you watched Finding Nemo, then you already know about this guy, okay? It's when Marlin and Dory just keep swimming, and then it gets darker, and then they see this thing glowing in the distance. Turns out it was part of the anglerfish, remember that scene? That's this fish. Now, they use this light or lure to attract fish, and then once they're near, they can scoop them up. What's wild is that they can swallow fish that are almost twice their size. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the deep sea lizard fish. I'm telling you, these creatures just keep getting weirder and weirder. Now these things can be found at the depths of the ocean at 1,000 to 2,500 meters down. They're about 25 inches long and are a shiny blue color. Now these things like to wait on the ocean floor until their dinner comes by. And when it's time, they open their jaws and snap out at them. In fact, lizard fish has hinged teeth, which means the more and more the prey resists and tries to escape, the further they'll just move down its throat. These things eat everything from coral to worms to fish to crustaceans. Some have been known to eat other members of their own species. So they have cannibal-like tendencies. In our fourth spot, we have the tardigrade. Now this has to be one of the strangest creatures on the entire planet. And I'm not even kidding when I say that. So tardigrades, otherwise known as water bears or moss piglets, are these plump looking creatures with eight legs and hands with 48 claws on each. They live off of nutrients from plants and microorganisms. When they are feeding, their sharp teeth extend outwards, allowing them to suck out the nutrients. Now, here's why they're super weird. These things are almost indestructible. Not only can they survive in the ocean, but they can even survive 
in outer space. If an apocalypse happened, they would still be floating around in the ocean. One of the reasons why is that they can go up to 30 years without food or water, and they can survive in both absolute zero or above boiling temperatures. That is just wild to me, like they don't seem like real creatures. In our third spot, we have the deep sea blob. Again, how is this thing real? It's like a slab of slime with a human face on it. I kid you not, I have met people that look like that. So the sea blob can be found at around 2,800 meters down along the US west coast. They are pinkish in color and can grow to be about 12 inches long. Now what's weird is that they lack bones and teeth. I mean, duh, that's why they're called a blob. And since they have low muscle mass, they don't actually move around much. So they just float along and when they see food, they open their mouths and suck the food in, kind of like Kirby. Now, here is the most interesting part. Take a blobfish out of water and, you know, it looks pretty creepy. Well, it's thought that when it's in water, it takes on a different appearance. But when out of water, they look weird because they don't have the water pressure to hold their shape. Moving on to number two, we have the flying spaghetti monster. Now, the creature's real name is Bathyphysma conifer, which is a mouthful and I probably pronounced it wrong, so people like to just call it the flying spaghetti monster due to its appearance. The thing appears to have a noodly type tentacles. This thing was first spotted off the coast of Angola in 2015 by workers at BP. They were taking footage underwater when they managed to capture this thing on film. Immediately, they called it the flying spaghetti monster as it reminded them of the deity of the church of the flying spaghetti monster. But apparently it's not just a singular organism, but a bunch of them fused together. It's a really strange creature. And in our number one spot today, we have the super giant shrimp. In 2011, a group of scientists were exploring the Kermadec Trench off the northeast coast of New Zealand when they came across this giant shrimp known as the super giant. That same year, six other giant shrimp were found. The largest one was 34 centimeters or 13 inches. Excuse me? No, shrimp are tiny. These things must have come from a universe where big creatures are small and small creatures are big, like in the movie Journey to the Center of the Earth 2. To this date, one of the biggest shrimp ever caught was 18 inches, which is 45 centimeters, which is massive. Starting off this countdown in no order, we have the Mosasaurus. This sea creature was alive back during the Cretaceous period, which was 145 to 65 million years ago. It was a massive aquatic lizard that grew to around 58 to 59 feet. In fact, they were at the top of the food chain eating everything beneath them. This included sharks, reptiles, and even other Mosasaurus. Yes, they feasted on their own kind. Fossilized remains of this beast were first discovered in the 1700s in the Netherlands. From there, they learned that it inhabited the Atlantic Ocean and adjacent seaways. Fossils have been discovered all around the world though, in North America, South America, Africa, Western Asia, and Antarctica. Next up in our number nine spot today, we have the Goblin Shark. Named because it looks just like the mythical creatures and perhaps just like the HP Gringotts bank employees, but in fish form, the Goblin Shark has been swimming in the deepest parts of the sea for over 100 million years, most known to be found near Japan. The Goblin Shark has a long snout, which is a kind of antenna, which makes it capable of sensing the minute electric fields being sent out by prey nearby. They can grow to be 12 feet long and weigh up to 460 pounds. Wow. Wow. Their fang-like teeth allows them to snap up their prey and devour it. At this point, scientists don't know too much about their behavior, however, they have concluded that they live a pretty solitary life. Next up in our number eight spot, we have the harp sponge, also known as the Chondrocladia lyra. I have to say, this sea creature is actually so satisfying to look at for some reason. Anyone else get me? It literally looks like a harp, which makes it so hard to believe that it is a living creature. This sponge-like creature is actually known for its carnivorous appetite. It actually has Velcro-like hooks on the external part of its body, and they trap copepods and other small crustaceans. They then break down its prey until it's able to be absorbed through its pores. So it sucks you in with its Velcro-like body parts and proceeds 
to eat you. In our seventh spot today, we have the vampire squid. Yes, a real underwater vampire. Despite its name, the vampire squid is actually neither a squid nor an octopus. Scientists have separated it into its own group, even though it is quite similar with eight arms and two tentacles. The vampire squid can grow to around 12 inches in length. Its body varies from completely jet black to red. Its name comes from its dark color, and its skin kind of resembles a cape as its skin is connected to its arms. Fun fact, if one of its arms were to be removed by, say, a predator, then it can regenerate and grow back. That's pretty cool. Coming up in our sixth spot today, we have the barrel eye fish. Okay, not going to lie, this fish looks like it's from another planet, let alone a parallel universe. It basically looks like it had a run-in with the company that makes those glow-in-the-dark bracelets. Am I? in our 90s baby is super happy to see this. Do kids these days still use glow in the dark bracelets? Please let me know in the comment section below. The barrel eye fish is a deep sea fish, also known as a spook fish, and it got its name because it has barrel shaped eyes with green lenses. They are known to have large fins, and they're also known to have a transparent head that fills with fluid. Before 2009, scientists actually believed that they could only look up, but they have since observed that the fish can rotate its eyes forward when it's eating. That's pretty cool. The barrel eye fish is usually seen looking like it's lying down motionless. According to researchers, their transparent heads and green pigmented eyes help in filtering out the sunlight reaching their deep sea habitat. They have also been found to be in the North Pacific waters and near Baja, California and Japan. In our fifth spot today, we have the flapjack octopus. Gosh, why is it named this? Now I'm going to have to eat pancakes after this video. As delicious as its name sounds, its look instantly makes you say, better not. In fact, it looks more like a cute Pokemon, if anything, so I'm going to choose to believe that it's really a creature from my universe where Pokemon really exist and it's somehow gotten to our universe through some underwater portal. The Flapjack Octopus is a part of the Umbrella Octopus family, known for their umbrella-like appearance during any kind of movement. It lives between 500 to 1,500 meters below the sea. They are mostly found in the Eastern Pacific Ocean with some sightings in the mid-Atlantic Ocean. They don't have a long lifespan, usually living for 1.5 to 2.5 years. The flapjack octopus eats prawns, lobsters, crayfish, shrimp, krill, crabs, to name a few. When it's ready to hunt, it flattens out its body in order to appear less threatening. The flapjack is another creature found in Finding Nemo, one of Nemo's you know, class friends named Pearl. In our fourth spot today, we have the Dumbo Octopus. As you can probably guess, its nickname came from the fact that its ears are as cute as the famous Disney character, Dumbo. The Dumbo Octopus, like the flapjack, is another umbrella octopus, and it can live down to the depths of 13,100 feet, and some scientists speculate even deeper. They are inkless, unlike a lot of their cousins, and they move by slowly flapping their ears, and they use their arms to steer. Fun fact about female Dumbo octopuses, they can actually store sperm for long periods of time after mating with a male. This is to their advantage, of course, because they can then transfer sperm to the most developed eggs when it is the right time for reproducing. No comment, but that sounds great. <laughs> they eat pelagic invertebrates that swim above the seafloor, and as such, they spend much much of their lives suspended above the seafloor. In our third spot today, we have gulper eels. The gulper eel is quite terrifying to look at, and it is definitely the kind of fish that makes me slightly terrified to go swimming in the ocean. But I don't have to worry because they are in the deep sea. I only have to worry about, you know, sharks, stingrays, and stepping on a jellyfish. The gulper eel has a very distinctive trait. It has a very large mouth, and it tends to snap at its prey, similar to a snake. Its large mouth and its ability to open wide allows it to eat creatures you would otherwise assume would be too big for it to eat. It has a very skinny body, long and snake-like. They are about two to three feet in length, and they live in the deep, deep sea ranging from 1,600 to almost 10,000 feet below the surface. Known to be the fish of your nightmares, and of course I don't disagree with this. In our second spot today, we have the pelican flounder. This fish is actually found in the Western Pacific and Indian Oceans. The pelican flounder makes itself as flat as possible to counter the pressure levels of the deep sea. Scientists haven't been able to observe this fish much in its natural habitat, and so 
therefore nothing much is known. But we do know that the pelican larva, however, looks like it is from another dimension and it has a very alien like sort of appearance. The larva are transparent and become brown as they grow into their adult form. They grow to be about 38 centimeters in length. Save the best till last. In our first spot today, we have the blobfish. Most people say that this is the ugliest fish in the world, but personally, I think the goblin shark is worse. Would love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. Which fish is uglier? The blobfish, the goblin shark, or let's throw in the anglerfish too, because that's another gross one. The blobfish has been described to look like a half melted human reduced to nothing more than a bubble. That is the perfect description of it. It also kind of reminds me of slime, but living. This fish can be found living in the deep sea of the coast of Australia and New Zealand. It is said to be residing in about 2,000 and 3,900 feet deep. Apparently the only reason it looks like the way that it does is because of depressurization damage done while bringing the animal to the surface. It looks like a fairly normal fish though at the bottom of the ocean. The blobfish has an extremely long lifespan of 130 years. It weighs about 20 pounds and it's about 12 inches long. They have no teeth, no skeleton, and they don't spend much energy moving around. So basically their name is quite fitting. <laughs> 